Let's, uh... Hello, welcome to another episode of Top Video Game Podcast of the Week. It is Monday, June 24, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight, Cole Monroe. Hello, Internet Land. <laughs> this is uh I got real deep for that one. I was I was ready for it. I didn't know I I <laughs> looking at your face, I I thought you'd go deep. Cole always goes deep. Yeah. Sometimes he goes high, but most, <laughs> he always goes deep. So- <laughs> uh, timely Days of Thunder reference there, buddy. <laughs> uh, this is HorribleNight.com's weekly check-in podcast. Uh, we just go over our games of the week and our, our favorite th- and least favorite things going on in the world of gaming. Uh, but first, Cole, we haven't talked for a while. What the hell's been going on, buddy? I've been busy. Um, Try to watch some movies, and I was successful in that. <laughs> um Went on a dude date with my boss to see uh, Man of Steel last week. Yeah, yeah. Tell and, me about uh, this. Have you seen it yet? No. Okay. I, I like the trailers. I hate Superman. That's my. That's where I'm going in with this. I think you might like this Superman. Yeah? Like, yeah. I mean, you like Zack Snyder, right? Am I correct yeah. in that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a very Zack Snyder Snooper, Superman. Um, they spend a lot of time on Krypton, which was cool. A lot of alien shit. and uh, Lots of uh, Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe's okay. He's alright. Um, when we walked out of the movie theater, um, my boss was like, Man, he looked like... And he's not, he's not a big gamer, but he knows like the culture and like he knows stuff about it. But he was like, man, those suits that the Kryptons put on made them look like they were in Gears of War. <laughs> like the ar- like the armor they had. So I thought that yeah. was pretty funny. <laughs> um, the way they told the, the origin story I thought was really well done. You're so reserved right now. Just, I'm, I'm getting to it. Okay. Um, it, it's... Uh, it was really well done in terms of, like, they did flashbacks instead of, like, go straight, oh, ship lands, here's him as a kid with Pa and Ma Kent, and whatever. Kevin Costner, excellent. Excellent I Paul. Was, I thought he was an awesome Pa Kent. <laughs> um, just, and the, like, and I said this before when I saw the trailer come out, He the line he had of saying, um, when Clark asked him, you know, what should I do, just let him die, and he says, maybe, like, that, that line gives me chills every time I hear it. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was really well delivered on his part. Um, but yeah, it, it, man, it is a weird Superman movie. Like, I, there was a point where I was like, man, if there's no reporting done being done from this newspaper, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that obviously was a joke. But yeah, he, he doesn't join the Daily Planet until... I don't want to spoil it, so I don't say anything, I guess. But um, That's... I don't know. If, if somebody's really happy about... Or whatever. If they're real, like, oh, don't tell me about when he joins the Daily Planet. That's really important for me. Um, uh, yeah, there's I, only I doubt s- those people are out there. There's only so much you. There's not really spoilers on an origin story for that. Like, spoilers yeah, for me was confirming who the bad guy was. Like, um, or just the stuff that happens after he establishes himself. Like the stuff yeah. you know. Well, I mean, you. I think you know if you know Superman at all, or you've seen the Christopher Reeve movies. Yeah, you know who the bad guy is, right? At the get go, watching Man of Steel. Um, but I thought um, Henry Cavill was a good Superman. He's completely jacked in this movie. <laughs> like he's human. He looks like Wolverine at times. That's how jacked he is. Um, Hugh jacked. Hugh Hugh jacked man. Um, <laughs> But man, it's really, it's really weird because it's so destructive. Like, their battle is—they just destroy the shit out of Metropolis. So much so that's like you think Hulk's fighting, like Incredible Hulk is fighting. Um, <laughs> but I, but I guess like if you, Superman and Doomsday tore the shit out of Metropolis too. So I mean, I guess there's history of happening. But usually, yeah. Superman's more conscious of what he's doing when he's fighting. But here he didn't give a shit, and I thought the fight scene was good. It was, it might have been a little bit too long, um, but the uh, my favorite part 
was the two compatriots of the bad guy. Uh huh. Um, there's a, there's a tiny woman and a really big dude, and I thought they were awesome. Interesting. Yeah, they weren't in it a whole lot, but just the way that they were. I didn't even. I, like, I thought they were cool. No, he was bringing companions with him. So. Well, and and he has like companions in the first movie too, like the Christopher Reeves movie, um, and they're kind of right. One looks like Trinity. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of echo back to that. It seems like where they have like a tiny chick who kicks ass, and then they have a really big dude. Yeah. Who kicks ass and uh, I don't know. I thought it was cool. It was it my favorite superhero movie? No. Was it the best Superman movie I've seen? You like the Christopher Reeves ones a lot. What I did you, like did you like Returns at all? I did like Returns. There I liked was it at the time. Some, yeah, I liked it at the time. This is better than that. Okay. Uh, there's no Lex, but there's hints of Lex, <laughs> which is cool. Which is really I think cool. that's a spinoff um, comic, actually. Hints of Lex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I recommend people go see it. It's definitely It definitely is a darker, grittier Superman, but it's still not dark gritty batman the you know, the it's... the thing that stuck with me on the reviews i've read is they've called they've called this superman kind of humorless and that there's a thing in the trailer where he's talking about oh shit is it when they're talking about the s i forget what the line is now but it's like oh yeah he says he says this stands for hope on my planet and he, she's like it's just an s yeah Here. and and they said like that's like the only like kind of bit of dialogue humor in the entire movie <laughs> Yeah, that really so, is, which is weird because, you know, they're Superman. The other superhero movies, especially Iron Man and even Avengers and stuff like that, they always have a bit of humor, I think, that, that helps bring in people who aren't necessarily superhero fans. And then they and were saying... wasn't necessarily in it at all. And they were saying, like, even Bruce Wayne in, in Nolan's Batman movies lended itself to having a little bit of humor or, or more sides of that character, but Superman is just straight Superman. So, um... The it, I mean I I, I want to go see it. It sounds like it's a good like you know movie theater experience. Yeah, but, I think um, you'll like it for a Superman movie. Like I know you're not a huge Superman yeah. fan, but I think you'll like it. But I don't you like know. I, you'll like the way it looks. I don't know if like if it's a movie. I'm excited to, like that. I'd recommend that Megan sees it. Like she likes the the fun superhero movies. So um, like we watched Avengers again this weekend, and like I don't think it's that we'll have that it's sense not of that. yeah. No, it's not that. Huh. But it's, I mean, it's worth watching. Where it stands on the pantheon of Superman movies, I don't know. Like, the one thing I do did like about it, and looking back on the Christopher Reeve ones, I mean, obviously, they're, those hold a special place in my heart because they're the ones I watched when I was a little kid. Um, but those movies are so slow compared to this Superman. Like, this ah. Superman moves pretty quickly. Um, and, I th- and I honestly think the more interesting stuff is Clark... The Clark stuff than the Superman stuff in yeah. this movie. So, huh. um, but it sounds shows, like they got, where he shows glimpses of being Superman, you know, I think that's cool. It sounds like they got a good foundation for it. Hopefully, they can have more fun with the second movie. Um, but also go, I guess also go check it out. So, yeah, I made a shit ton of movie. Um, <laughs> it actually, I guess, it took a fall this weekend though. Like, um, yeah, it did sure, well the opening the weekend. Coming out. Yeah. Um, sticking with DC Comics, uh, I finally checked out, uh, after actually reading, I think, one of the issue zeros or whatever, basically a retelling of the of the origin story of Green Arrow, so I finally watched an episode of Arrow, just because it's always showing up in my Hulu Plus, like, feeds, and saying, you will like this, you will like this, and I haven't really heard anybody talk about it, but after I read the origin comic, I was really interested in checking it out. Um, because he has a lot of similarities to Batman that he's just, you know, he's a, he's a rich kid that, um, in this case, he, he was deserted on an island for five years and a bunch of shit happened to him and turned him into a badass, but he was a punk before that. Um, and then he, but the difference between him and Batman is he actually kills dudes, <laughs> yeah. but it's a CW show. So that's why I stayed away from it. And this one might be a little too CW for me as far as just the acting that could be used in daytime television. And <laughs> but the but the the whole setting and the characters of I mean obviously Green Arrow is one of DC's more popular characters, but um, 
uh, like all that stuff's good, but the execution's a little bit too CW. I was kind of kind of disappointed. Yeah, I watched like the first four or five episodes like concurrently as the show you know debuted or whatever. Um, and I and I really liked it. It is very CW. There are very pretty people um, on that show. Yeah. And I I don't know like I think it's it's got. It's got something about it that is pretty good, and I think the backstory is the most interesting thing about it. Like, why was he on that boat? What does this deal with his dad's company? All this stuff. I think that's interesting storytelling. Yeah. But some of the yeah, like like you said, some of the acting is pretty CW. Yeah, and and he reminds me of who's the dude who played Robin in the bad Batman movies. Chris, Chris, O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. That's the guy that chose to play Green Arrow reminds me of Chris O'Donnell. So I can see that, yeah. Um but I don't know, it has potential. Um I don't know. It's I don't, pretty I don't, violent for a CW show. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't like to judge these shows by just one episode, but we'll see. We'll see if I go back to it. So. Yeah. Uh, moving uh, on. one more thing. I, okay. one more thing about the Superman. I thought it was funny. I saw, I don't know where I saw it, somewhere on the internet, but um, I think it was a Father's Day thing, and it cracked me up because I never thought of it. It was Superman saying to Batman, yeah, you only lost one dad. Get over it. (laughs) I just thought that was funny. (laughs) I was thinking about that the whole time I was watching the movie. (laughs) I haven't heard that. Yeah. Um, Moving on to video games, uh, chat. Feel free to jump in here with your game of the week. Cole, what do you got? Uh, real quick, just go over these real quick before I get to my game of the week. I uh, I moved my PlayStation 3 into my man cave slash office slash guest bedroom and downloaded um, Chrono Cross for the PlayStation 1. And uh, uh, that was a game that I purchased when I was younger and never got around to playing it that much, so it's it's been sitting in my shopping cart for a long time on PSN and played about an hour of it and um, yeah, I don't really know I don't have a lot to say about it, but just <laughs> look uh listen to future podcasts and there might be a little bit more. So All that's right. a little teaser for you. Okay. Also the same thing with Xeno Gears. Um, I'm just big into the Square Squaresoft PS one RPGs apparently lately and uh Xeno Gears I've had for a long time. Started playing it again. I think probably part of the uh, E3 um, trailer of X for the Wii U kind of got me salivating for that, um, and wanted to get a good taste of that with Xeno Gears because it's the same guy who made who's making both games. So did you have you played you haven't played Xeno Gears beforehand? Okay. Uh, maybe like an hour. Okay. That was it. Um, so yeah, that's all right. What I'm well, getting get some RP- like it's, it's, RPG talk in the future. Yeah, and I, and I forgot like. I forgot that EA published those games for Squaresoft back in the day. Yeah. So it's really oh. weird to see a Square Squaresoft and EA. It's yeah. Like EA published game. It's really weird. Square. Yeah. There. I. I was Square playing. EA, yeah. Yeah. When I, I was think playing. More was like that or. Final Fantasy VI that I got on the. Yeah. The Vita. I. Uh, they. Yeah, the. Uh, the PlayStation version. I think it says. Yeah. It says yeah. Square Electronic Arts as the publisher. So. Yeah. It is yeah, strange. It's really weird. We gotta figure out a way to. Then, we gotta figure out a way to for you to stream those old games because you'll play the hell out of those. But yeah, if I'm streaming them for sure, yeah. I'll just figure out how to get my PS3 hooked up. Yeah. All right. uh, but the main the main game I've been playing um, came out shit almost two years ago, if not two years ago, um, and that would be Witcher Two. I was I've been craving craving some mad RPGs lately. As yeah. you can tell by the games I'm playing, and. I've been like him and hawing over getting Skyrim again, um, especially since it's only like twenty bucks or thirty bucks. Um, but then Witcher Two came on sale for like six bucks, and um, Nathan Moses, Ethan's older brother, owed me money because I bought him the Awesome Knots, the Humble ND bundle, and he had a credit on Steam, so he basically gifted that to me. Um, and man, that that game is really cool. Um, I think it's I don't know what it is why, why, what, what's different about it that I like in terms of comparing it to a Skyrim because they both kind of take place in the same type of setting 
Um, but I think you're more, with The Witcher 2, you're more involved in the actual war that's going on. And kind of, instead of kind of trying to discover yourself, um, your character's more established, I think, than in a Skyrim. And I think that's what appeals to me a little bit more. Because there's this whole, um, this whole backstory that obviously from the first game and then from the books that the game's based on, that just tends to weave this really interesting world. And it's very, I think it reminds me of Game of Thrones is why I'm really huh. into it as well. Just like uh, kind of just the richness and the depth of it. Exactly, yeah. And like for me, those those books and like also the, the Wheel of Time series that I've read, um, huh. I'm more interested into like what's going on outside of the actual main story. Like how did we get here? What's the history? Did they... Like, do you know if they actually translated those books yet, or are they still just... They're translated. Okay. Yeah, the Witcher books? Yeah, yeah. they're translated. Um, the first book is, like, a bunch of short stories, so I don't know how that flows together, but it's a bunch of short stories about Geralt, the main character. And then I think there's another one that's being translated this year, this fall sometime, but there's I think there's three total. And I think the third one is the one that's being translated. I'm not 100% on that, but... Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just like the way his character progresses in the first, like, couple hours of the game, which is all I've played of it, and the, the way he can use his magic, and just how you have to juggle which sword you're using in if you're fighting a human character or a beast. Um, and me and yeah, talk, talk about meditating. Jordan wants to know more in chat. Meditating? You know, I really haven't done a whole lot of meditating. <laughs> um, it's basically... It's very similar to Fable, where you could like sleep and change the time. Uh huh. Uh, that's a lot of what the meditating I've used it for. The only two times I've used it. Um, but yeah, it's like, oh, I need this time to go faster, so I'll meditate. Basically, like going to an inn and sleeping in a square soft RPG. Um. um so did you play through the tutorial or the yeah, training? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm. I'm already on my first quest and stuff for outside of the so how many first quest. how much time are you in? Oh, I don't know. Let me look. <laughs> I only ask because I've read that the learning curve for this game is about eight hours. Yeah, I'm about four hours in. Okay. Um, I would say there is definitely a learning curve, but it doesn't it doesn't keep me from being interested in it like some other games do. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, there, it gives you enough up front to get a good taste and see. I mean, I think you can definitely tell if you're going to like it or not. Um, and through that first four hours, obviously, you know, that's what I did. But, yeah, there's definitely some things that I'm not quite sure on. Like some of the spell names, I don't know what the hell they do. I've just been using the same one over and over again, and it works for me. Um, but the enemies are pretty varied. That it's Graphically, it's gorgeous. Um, and just all the characters are pretty well established and built. The ones I've uh, come across, and the bad guy is pretty awesome so far. So it's just I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to have a negative thing to say about it because I'm just loving every every uh, awesome. everything about it so far. And I hope you like, stick with the it. First time, yeah, me too. And I think for the first time, like I get a lot of times in games like that huge, I'll get caught up in doing everything. And all the little side quests and all the little bullshit, and that makes me stop playing. Uh, but I think on this one, I've kind of made a pact for myself. So just main quest it. If you see a side quest that's interesting, go for it. Um, but right now, it's just I'm just main questing, and it's going pretty good for me. So Krug Dog wants to know if uh, you've collected any sex cards because that was in the first game. We're not sure if it's in the second one. I have not had any sex cards. But have you had but sex? In the first, like, ten minutes of the game, <laughs> you see boobs in JJJ. so. <laughs> Thank you, Witcher. It's pretty, yeah, and it looks pretty good. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be weird. Ethan and I talked about The Witcher, and I think we're both going to start playing it. If we're going to have three, three of us playing The Witcher 2 at the same time in 2013. Welcome to Summer Gaming. <laughs> I think we I think we all got uh, caught up with that Witcher 3. Yeah, yeah we're all like, we have Oh my to, god, that's awesome. We have to beat this before. It's not like the Witcher 1 that I, you know, I've heard just takes a lot to get into, but is, it has a great payoff. But 
it's more of a chore to play than The Witcher 2. So, so it's, I, it's basically Mass Effect 1 <laughs> to <laughs> Mass Effect 2. Her, you know. Yeah, except I think Witcher's at least hard. Mass Effect isn't hard. It's just, yeah, sometimes not really a game. But Yeah, I think I think The Witcher definitely it definitely uses your brain a lot more than Mass Effect for sure in terms of <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. what yeah. kind of progression you're going to make. Um, you know, you just can't go blazing through. Not to, not to discredit Mass Effect 2 because I love that game, but... It's definitely got a lot more uh, systems in it that you need to learn. Uh, some games of the week from chat. Uh, Krug Dog's been playing Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. That's a classic game that I have uh, never gotten into, uh, but heard great things about. Um, JPT and Matthew Maiwo from Rhinoceros Beetle, who contributes the theme song to Top Video Game Podcast. Both been playing The Last of Us. I have to give that game props as well. Um, Michael Dean has been playing Unepic. Uh, I believe uh, we played that a while back, um, but it just came out on Steam through Steam Greenlight. It's a kind of an interesting take on D&D games. Um, and then Jordan's been playing Don't Starve. We love Don't Starve. And Freak Jin has been playing Scrolls, which is Mojang's uh, latest game. I think that just came out, a uh, tactical uh, strategy card game. Um, I'm going to kind of try to wrap all my games of the week into Sony's um, games where you can create stuff. That's my game <laughs> of the week. Um, so I won't go into this, uh, but I did get a Vita this weekend. And... Yeah. I've been riding high on Sony, got PlayStation Plus, getting free games, getting caught up. They also had a big little big planet sale this weekend. So I'll start with start with Sound Shapes on um, PlayStation Vita because I played that first. Uh, it's also on PSN, so you can play it on uh, PS3. Uh, but just it's a little it's just a little kind of puzzle platformer um, where basically every all the little collectibles that you get throughout the level. Um, they kind of tr- they trigger notes in the background music, and as you hit a collectible, like it adds notes to the music, and it plays a song, and and the songs are really kind of intricate, and all the way up to I know Beck contributed his album to this to this game, and then there's a whole create your own, your own levels with your own musical notes side to this game that I didn't even know existed, and the game's been out a while, so there's a lot of downloadable levels for it, and there's you know, you can download the the dubstep dubstep pack or the '80s sound pack or the chip tunes pack. So you can add this different type of music to your created levels and upload those, get them rated, make playlists, and or you can just play the main game, which is what I was doing. Um, but I was just kind of blown away with I had no idea that Sony was doing that with this game. Um, as far as just continuing to build a little creative playground around this around sound shapes. Um, uh, before I move on, move on any, anything you want to know about sound shapes? What is it? <laughs> it's just... I, mean, I, I, know, I mean, I know what it is, but... Like, all, I mean, all you do is you just... You navigate, you're like this little, this little circle, and you can stick to some parts of the environment, and um, some of the parts of the environment will kill you. Like, anything that's red in the world will kill you. And you basically just have to go from the entrance to the exit and get through all the levels to unlock all the notes to play the full song and get a score. So that's pretty much all there is to it. There's no like story or overarching enemies. That's kind of it. Um, and then, um, so I kind of put that in my hat a little bit like, Oh, that's cool. You know, Sony's doing this with, with more games. And then I got little big planet carding for free through PlayStation plus or, or I also had a bunch of points stored up or in my wallet. So I, it's kind of a haze of what I got for free, what I actually paid for. Um, right. But Little Big Planet carding, um, I got that and Little Big Planet 2 for uh, Lily because I knew that she'd enjoy watching and playing those games. Um, I kind of wrote off Little Big Planet carding a long time ago as I played the demo and didn't like the way that it handled. Um, and I assumed it was just a uh, Mario Kart clone. And... While the base game is like that, it's also they have all the creative creative tools in this to make your make your own tracks and import all of your little big planet stuff. And 
for some reason I missed that feature on the back of the box because that's again these games have been out for years now and they have a community that's built up around them and there's just tons of stuff to download for it and you know also like all the uh, skins that you can buy for your sack boys and for your carts and it's just kind of a little in ingenious little marketplace that Little Big Planet and Sound Shapes and Sony has been adding to all these little games that I haven't really been paying attention to. So, I guess I, I downloaded Mario Kart as well, and I haven't. Um, what did I just call that? Did I call it Mario Kart? Yeah, Mario uh, Kart. <laughs> um, talking about Little Big Planet mm-hmm. karting, but I was afraid that I was going to be too much like a Mario Kart, and like I've gotten what I want from Mario Kart lately, which is more Mario Kart, so I'd never ended up playing. Yeah, I've, I've never really had an interest to branch out, but but I also, you know, it was, it was cheap and fun, and, but now you can get in there and tool around, because when I actually, what I really want to talk about was Little Bit Big Planet 2, when um, I brought Lily in to, to play that game now. It's, you know, it's, it's more Little Big Planet. It's got a lot more on the creative side to be able to make games and that kind of thing. Um... But it imported all my little big planet stuff, and I don't know. She was sold on the game on two features: just sitting down and dressing up my sack boy. <laughs> um, I didn't know they had that much pink in the game. First of all, um, and <laughs> and it's just it's really fun to see. I, I like showing Lily games. I mean, she's four. I like showing her games that kind of just open up her imagination the same way that games did for me when I was that age and you could just see it just just click and yeah. she's so close to being able to um, use the controller to run around with me I, I can't wait till that till that happens but we had a lot of fun dressing up the character and then um, I mean she just would she likes watching the story and interaction with all the all, all the characters that are showing me how to play the game and um, and then in the first couple levels of this, it sort of centers around a character that's kind of like Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, and it has some classical music playing. But it's all, um, uh, what's that? What's the name for the music that you don't have to pay for? That's because it doesn't have a Muzak. copyright anymore, huh? Music. No, they uh, just you know, it's so old they don't copyright it. You can use it, but anyway, uh, just, yeah. It, they were just playing kind of remixes of classical music, and she was just humming and singing along and saying how much she loved the music and for as much as I wrote off a little bit big planet 2 cuz I didn't really like the platforming a little bit in little big planet 1 you know <coughs> playing this game with friends and then playing this game with your kids that's that's where it's at like it's not for the solo hardcore gamer um, that you know I would get into it if I wanted to use the creative tools but that just opened up a whole new world for that game and uh, it was it was a lot of fun and just reminded me of kind of like a Nintendo experience that Happened to be with all the Sony stuff. So, public domain. Thank you, Jordan. It was public domain music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, public domain. Like, yeah. like Ride of the Valkyries, that kind of thing. So, yeah, very cool. So, um, we're going to move on to Worst of the Week in Gaming. Uh, so, if you've got anything to contribute there, chat, go ahead and uh, throw that in there. But first, Cole, you and I haven't talked about E3 at all. So, it's been a couple weeks. What's what's just sticking in your head when you think back to E3? You know, obviously the Sony press conference is on everybody's mind still after a couple of weeks, um, and how just just fucking awesome it was. Um, just to get excited over a press conference again it was nice. <laughs> um, did, but did you but watch? You watched excited. it after the fact, probably. Uh, yeah, I watched it after the fact, so it wasn't as exciting as. Did you know what had happened? I know. Yeah, I knew okay. what happened. Um, but it was still kind of cool to hear the crowd react. Like, oh, you, know, you could hear, um, you'd hear people talk about crowd reactions like that, but it wasn't. I don't know. It, it was old school. Was definitely, it was old school. To, you had to hear it for yourself more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but you know what? The, the game that stood out to me. Um, What's which that? is kind of surprising is Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> You're that lucky we're having this like, conversation now and not right after I saw it because I did a 180 on that game. I hated that trailer originally. So yeah, and see, like I never saw the trailer. I didn't mm-hmm. watch the trailer until afterwards. I saw the gameplay trailer yeah, first. The gameplay is where it's and at. 
that's where I was like, oh my god, this is this looks this looks like Square might be doing something right with Final Fantasy. Um, now that's obviously yet to be determined <laughs> until the game comes out because you know I've been I've I've been a pretty big Final Fantasy fan over the years and uh, was really disappointed. Yeah. What was it? Thirteen. I was disappointed for you. That's why I've wrote off the franchise. Yeah. Because they lost you, yeah, and I'm like, they don't so, have a chance of keeping me. Yeah, I was I was out. But now, you know, like, pretty much, like, all the things that Square announced was pretty cool. Like, I'm not a big Kingdom Hearts fan, uh, but I never really played the games either. And so the uh, the HD remix is kind of interesting to me, just because I kind of want to see what it's all about. Um, and then the, even the HD remix of Final Fantasy X and X-2 is... Is a little intriguing. So that's pretty it, impressive is, what they offered, even though it was all Final Fantasy based, like RPG kind of stuff. It, it is ten two that interesting? No, but <laughs> just, I, I would buy nice. Final Fantasy ten to get that for free. You sure. Know? Yeah. Unless I get I, it on the Vita. But. I'd be curious if t- how how well ten holds up because I enjoyed. Yeah. Up until the Blitz Bowl tournament, I really enjoyed that game. I and I and I played that one through, and I really enjoyed it, but. I don't know if I can listen to Titus for another game. He, <laughs> you know what? I Every time I would hear his voice, I, I mean, it's obviously a pretty annoying, but every time I would hear his voice when I was playing it, I was like, man, this sounds like Michelangelo from the Teenage Mutant maybe, maybe I was just going to ask that. Maybe you put that in my head. I thought for some reason he did one of the Turtles. You know, he wasn't because I looked okay. it up, but I always thought that he sounded like it. <laughs> just That was my thing. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, that, I think that looks crazy just the different like i hate saying this word but verticality of that game is it's is freaking weird for a final fantasy game yeah i mean i mean is it gonna be like i see character action game when i see that is it gonna yeah that's what it looks like to me okay oh just I mean, which is like which was kinda. because they said what it started out as versus 13 so is this completely separate from 13 now I don't think so. I yeah. think it's still it's, in, it's still in the same. That's what was the what was the um, I think it's still in the same universe in terms of like. Evil they have Moogles. It? Yeah. And Chocobo. <laughs> no, like I think it's in the same world, or it's more connected than we probably know right now. But that was kind of yeah. When they made, I mean, if it was more, I wrote it off a lot for just being in the thirteen universe, and I hope that they cut that out, but. It's also like if they really do a, you know, character action focused game and they call it 15, that's kind of neat. <laughs> uh-huh. It shows that they might be doing some uh, some other stuff with it. So, and why not? Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So that's the thing that stood out to me the most, for sure. Uh, it looks like this might tie into your uh, Horrible Night highlight as well. Yeah. Um, I. I was waiting for your article. Uh, you had texted me last week, or we were having a discussion about when the um, the Xbox, when Microsoft kind of did their flip flop 180 on their policies, and we were having a text conversation about that. And um, you had said, "Well, that just screws my E3 article that I've been working on for the past couple of days." So I was interested to see what um, what you had had to say and and, and what your favorite things for the show was and. Uh, you know, you spelled that out pretty clear in your article. Any surprises or? Well, no, I'm not surprised because I, I kind of, in listening to what you had to say, I kind of knew your thoughts on it. But overall, in the history of you being a gamer, um, I'm really surprised that you're, like, on Team Sony as much as you <laughs> are. Yeah, I'm on Team Game Developer, I feel like. <laughs> right, and... yeah, you know, exactly, like... And it just happens to be on, on the Sony side. I'm telling you, um, what, which is just as cool yeah. as that Sony press conference was for laying the smack down. What sealed the deal for me was when they threw those nine developers on stage, and it was just like, "Here's what we're embracing," and that it just was so much against the message of Microsoft that that's that was where I saw the contradiction, and that's like, I see those developers, and I see the potential for just any game to come out on this console and that being that wide open makes me really interested in it. And that was kind of like, yeah, I'll throw my support around, around that for now. So, 
Yeah, and, and I think they're do, being very smart in kind of cultivating that all the indie developers because you're not going to get all the AAA games coming out all the time throughout the year. You're mm-hmm. going to need those weird little games that people love, but you know they might not sell millions of copies, but they can support a system in the mean, in the lean times. And um, I think that's where the Wii U is struggling right now. And yeah. I think Sony yeah. has been Sony has been quietly building that aspect of their um, of their thinking with the PS3 with like with Flow and Flower and Joe Danger at first and like all these like Trash Panic all these weird like indie games Mm -hmm. coming out and basically setting the ground for Sony to really focus on these um, games because they know like these are these might not be million dollar sellers or or sell a million copies and be priced at sixty dollars, but they can support the life of the console, I think, better yeah. than the sixty dollar games, AAA games. And then what I think what we saw with Xbox's kind of reversal, there is an importance to get off to a good start. And Sony's making all the right plays right now to get that that um, early adopter base established so their console can succeed down the road, and then and then we'll deal with the whole digital DRM issue in two to three years when disc games are going away. Because like I said in that article, Sony they haven't really stated how they're going to handle that, and I would be shocked if it's not similar to what uh, Microsoft laid out and what Steam kind of does. So um, like that battle is still yet to come. Um, <laughs> And but why fight that battle today when you have to you have to get your base there first? And I think that's right. what Sony recognized, and Microsoft just kind of assumed that you know all their Xbox Live members were just come on up. Right. And um, um, I think they <clears throat> they got a dose of real dose of reality at E three. So um, my horrible night dot com highlight. Um, first, I want to give a shout out um, to the fact that we launched our new podcast. Um, on Tuesday nights, uh, you can catch Ethan and I for the Night Force Action Report, um, where we'll be talking about the games we're playing and also the articles we're writing and any projects we're working on for HorribleNight.com, as well as um, we tend to close the show with uh, pitching some game ideas just to see what the hell happens to keep the uh, creative juices flowing. Um, and also, so in the middle of E3, I didn't end up posting it that week. I posted it the week after. Ethan found this game... Uh, on Xbox Live Indie Games, and I think it must be coming to PC, or you wouldn't have found it. Um, called Mount Your Friends, and um, it you have to watch the trailer, but it's just a very very odd physics game um, that also has a disturbing amount of penis animation. Of so it's from the 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 guys that brought you Baby Maker Extreme. But the trailer is hilarious, um, and it'll scar you for life, so I recommend checking that out. <laughs> Sounds like a game you think will be playing. Yeah. All right, time for the worst of the week in gaming. Just things that have bugged us uh, in the headlines the last week or so. Um, what you got, Cole? Um, and it's something that E3 focused a lot on, um, and that's just the second screen bullshit yeah. that everybody's kind of developing for. Like, I get that it's optional and it's not necessarily a part of the game, but when developers are locking gameplay behind, or, you know, storylines or whatever behind that, like... Meaningful that, content. Like, meaningful content, yeah, because you don't have a second screen. I think that's kind of fucked up, like... Not everybody can afford to have an iPad or a or a phone, and I know that's a lot of people have smartphones now, where that's not much of an issue, especially gamers. But I don't know. I for it to be required to get to that content, I think is pretty asinine. Yeah, I mean they got to they got to treat it like supplementary material. The second that they like, unless they really design the experience around it. And sell you on that. Um, if it's a part of a, if it's a meaning meaningful part of a meaningful game, people are going to be pissed. Yep. And sure. 
it just feels like you know the 3D stuff two or three years ago where they're trying to sell us on something that we don't really want um, and while I think the technology is awesome and there are some cool ways to um, to utilize this I haven't seen that yet and um, yeah right now I'm just ignoring it but you, like you said the second that they lock something away there or give me something like some sort of unfair advantage by using that or, or something like that um, that's gonna that's gonna get ugly pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. Um, my worst of the week is the way that people have chosen to cover cover this comment by Ellen Page in regards to her likeness being used for The Last of Us. So, Ellen Page had a um, Ask Me Anything, I believe, on Reddit, and somebody asked her about you know what she think about The Last of Us and and Ellie kind of looking like her and she said you know i didn't think much of it uh but they thought they they ripped off my likeness um which is you know i'm paraphrasing which is especially uncool because i'm in a game coming up that focuses on that like but it was kind of like if you picture it in the context of a reddit ask me anything or just an online chat or a forum post like the phrase all any of the headlines were focused on was the phrase Ellen Page says the the Last of Us Last of Us ripped off ripped me off or whatever, and they weren't actually like I don't feel like she's completely she's terribly upset by it, but it was just like yeah that's kind of stupid, just kind of an off offside comment, and I don't know I just saw a lot of people using that phrase to get headlines and um and and get clicks, and that was it was just kind of annoying because I don't I don't think it was intended to come across that way. Although, who can really argue that that character looks exactly like her? <laughs> yeah, it does. But I, I don't think it's... I don't know. Who knows? I don't really have anything meaningful to add to, add to that. I think it's kind of silly. But. Yeah, just... There are... I don't know. It's just... Maybe I'm a little too sensitive to it. Ethan's kind of the same way. But just the, the phrases people choose to use in their headlines sometimes just to get attention when it's like, no, she's not, like, picking a fight with them. She's not... But that's the way you you're making it. Um, you're choosing to make it come across. So, um, right, exactly. And uh, oh yeah, it also reminded me um, that <laughs> Ethan and I did an article about this for for the debut trailer of The Last of Us, where we basically at the time Joel looked like an an old Sam Fisher, and then we yeah. called out. <laughs> we thought it was a Juno two trailer or something like that. And we were being dumb, but. I think that point still holds true. <clears throat> um, from chat, worst of the week, uh, JPT is building a computer, and he just hates the amount of options that there there are, <laughs> and every choice he makes feels like a missed opportunity. So, uh, but I think he's also kind of probably enjoying it. Uh, uh, dude, at a certain point, you just gotta say fuck it and just make the purchase. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of what I did. Like I struggled with that too. Like, oh well, what if? Like, I was like, well, I know there's going to be new NVIDIA graphics cards coming out. I should probably just wait. But then uh, I knew there was going to be a new Intel chip, you know, right after that. So it's like, you just got to say fuck it and get what you want to get and get it, you know. Because you, you, you can always wait. Like, I always tell Gar, she's always like, my wife, she's, she's like, well, the new iPhone is just about to come out. Or, you know, or, or you know, she's not going to purchase one. It's like, you know, you, you might as well get it now. Because you're not gonna have it for that period of time, you know. Like, you can have it and enjoy it when you get it, but if you can, you're, if you wait, you're always gonna be waiting. So, just do it. Just do it so we can play online together. <laughs> uh, while you fix the focus on your camera, uh, Matthew Mywo. Whoa! What is going on here? His his worst of the week is the X Bone. Um, not sure if he's talking about the Xbox One in general or or the phrase, but I do stand by the fact that I love that phrase. I I just do. I hope it it doesn't get old with me. It's funny. Um, and then Michael Dean has been trying to play Valley Without Wind, which we did a game curious on a long ass time ago. It was actually fun to play at the time because we were playing it live, and the developers came into the chat and were helping us play the game, but. Uh, it it is definitely very difficult to uh, to understand and play, unfortunately. Sure, definitely. 
Uh, on the best of the week in gaming, Cole. Uh, you had Last of Us and Ellen Page as your worst of the week, and I'm going to have Last of Us as my best of the week. <laughs> and that's my best of the week because never has a game in the first 20 minutes <laughs> almost made me fucking cry. <laughs> in The Last of Us. I had to take a break, man. I did too. I was just like, I was sitting was there like, sick. like my hands on my head, like, oh my god, oh my god, this is crazy. What just happened? Like, I, yeah. how? How? We're not gonna spoil the how. When did you figure out that that was going to happen? I, I till it happened. Like okay. I was completely. I just had this I was feeling. I completely in focused the... on the story, like as yeah. it was happening on on the what we were doing at the time, I was like completely focused on it, but I was just like completely and utterly shocked. That, I um, should have seen it coming, but... Yeah. And that game doesn't really let you go. That um, It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, and it is beautiful to look at. They do such like a good... I mean, they... I don't know what Naughty Dog does to get that much They out know of the, the ins and outs of that PS3 like nobody else. Like my still my favorite part is they do a great job of making their their cutscenes look like they're in game, but you kind of know they're not because you can see the high higher resolution of the of the models. But they they do it so seamlessly yeah, that it makes you it almost makes you think that you're playing in a higher resolution than you are because you kind of assume when you're looking at the back of Joel that his you know that his face also looks like it does in those cutscenes. But it's it's. Mm-hmm. Brilliantly done. I love the banter in the game. Um, like all the voice work, all the all the character stuff is fantastic. And then um, you know the action scenes will make it or break it for a lot of people. I feel like, but it's um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm probably I'm hoping to finish that this week and hopefully get a get nice. a review. How long, of it. how long how long a game is it? Do you know, I forget. I heard like eight to ten, ten to twelve. Okay. I'm so, just about an hour into it. So. Yeah, it's. It's fantastic. It is, if it maintains its momentum, it's got game of the year written all over it for me. So yeah, I know, and I know, like people have said, it's not fun because and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I am too. Like that's what I didn't understand. Like what I know, I understand why you're saying it's not fun, but that's what makes it awesome. You mm-hmm. know, like to to make you feel that uncomfortable about a game while you're playing it is. It reminds me of people's reactions to when they were first playing Walking Dead, the Telltale. Oh, absolutely. Except it. I, I mean, except it's much more playable. Right. Um, and so it's a game. Is what I feel like saying. they one upped. I, I think I said this last week. I think they one upped Telltale because they got the storytelling down. Uh, the only thing that Walking Dead has that Last of Us doesn't is the element of choice. Right. Um, but other than that, I mean, they've they've. The action sequences are so well done. They're kind of they can be formulaic, but they're I think they're still really enjoyable. So every yeah, everybody should watch a play through this, play this game, experience yeah, sure. The Last of Us for sure. Um My Best of the Week Um is Kevin Levine is apparently writing a remake of Logan's Run. And the only reason I call this out is because I think it's kinda cool that Hollywood's paying attention to him. Um, obviously he has great ideas. Um, and also on his, just listening to some of his Bioshock Infinite reviews of how long he's been working on this game. And then you think about how long he worked on Bioshock and just, you know, he takes on these four or five year projects. This has got to be an amazing break for him as far as just like, catch your breath. I don't think video games are in danger of losing Kevin Levine, but like. Kevin, Kevin Levine. Why did I write Kevin? Thank you. I don't know. You're welcome. I sounded like an idiot. I, yeah, I, thought, I, I thought you I, said Kevin around the first time. I was like, eh, that's not right. I know what I'm talking about, but you do. I need a punishment of some sort for that. I apologize. Um, but yeah, we're not in danger of losing Ken. He's um, he'll be back, and probably I would guess with something much smaller scope than Bioshock. But um, I still think it's cool that another industry kind of picked up on um, a little bit of what we've we've seen from him so yeah i think the that industry you know would be uh beneficent benefited by his presence because of just the original ideas he's come up with mm-hmm. uh, with the bioshock games and even going back to like system shock and stuff like that 
So I think it'll definitely, uh, hopefully his scripts get picked up. Um, I know it's, not, it's a pretty uh, rough industry to get something that's uh, greenlit, but I think it is, I mean, he's a really creative dude and uh, spends a lot of time on games, so I think, you know, if he can relax with a writing a movie script, I think it'll be beneficial, beneficial for all of us when he gets back to games, for sure. Um, from chat, JPT, best of the week is watching the E3 Fallout. Just watching people scatter and throw out their opinions, and I'm sure that was especially fun with uh, Microsoft's reversal last week. Um, and then Matthew Mywo uh, counters his worst of the week by saying the PlayStation 4 is the best of the week. So, I'm the PlayStation 4 fan there. Um, and then Michael Dean really enjoyed the new Castlevania trailer. Me too. I don't think that Lords of Shadow 2 is going to win any new fans, but uh, I think Lords of Shadow fans are gonna. We're going to be happy. We're going to be fine. I still think it's crazy that that is the best Castlevania game that they are best selling. Yeah. Castlevania game. It's crazy. Best selling. Yeah, that is. That's what I, meant. I mean, I guess I just always assumed that the DS game is sold a lot. I thought there were a lot of uh, DSs out there, but I don't know. Maybe I underestimate going multi platform on consoles versus the handhelds. I look those numbers a little bit closer. Right. All right, and my final question of the day, um, as we head into the peak of summer and kind of a lull in video game releases post E3, um, do you game more or less in the summer? Um, traditionally, I think I game more, um, although the nights are a little better in terms of weather, and mm-hmm. especially living in Vegas, it'll be interesting to see if that means I'm staying in more because it's so hot or going out more because there's so much more to do. Uh, but I've got The Witcher. I've got, you know, Chrono Cross and Xenogears. I've got about 60 other games on Steam that I need to be <laughs> playing right now. Last of Us. I mean, I'm I'm stocked up and ready to go, so I think it'll be uh, it'll be more for sure. What about you? I, there's, there's something about... I feel like I'm more focused in my gaming during the summer. I... I'm more I'm more focused in that I play it play games in the evenings for longer blocks of time than I don't know I feel like in the winter I just play them on and off a lot like rather than I don't know it it just it kind of changes with I want to make the use of my gaming time because I know I'm going to be outside like I kind of plan my days a little bit differently in the summer sure. versus the winter it's just like oh I can play whatever whenever I want to because we've got to be inside but um, summer I like. I think I just do a better job at defining my game time, and it's, yeah, right now it's about um, picking and choosing those games in your backlog that you want to get done before uh, things get interesting again. Right. So, I still got to finish Bioshock Infinite. That's... Oh my god, you haven't finished that yet? No, I felt like, yeah, that's that's a story for another show. Um, I think we're going to get out of here, though. Uh, chat, thanks for participating this evening. Uh, Top Video Game Podcast will be back again next week. And stay tuned for some Night Force on Tuesday night. Cole, thanks for hanging out. Night Force! You're welcome. Oh, you want to contribute to the new theme song? (laughs) Sure. All right. We'll see you. Later.